There are some scenic places in New Mexico for tourists to visit, but they are all about a two hours drive from Roswell. Very few tourists came here before the aliens arrived. Roswell's big attraction now is the UFO Museum and Research Center. Sandy James is deputy director. Basically, a long time ago, if you came to Roswell, you were lost. But now, if you come to Roswell, you're coming to see the museum. People from around the world flock here to see exhibits about the July 1947 incident and other UFO stories. They also buy lots of souvenirs. Top items that we uh, people buy would be t-shirts is first, uh, coffee mugs are second, shot glasses, and keychains. This large family from India spent more than an hour looking at the evidence of alien visits and came away convinced. I see all the signs and all the pictures and uh, I heard before for a few stories about the aliens. I believe it somewhat, but not fully. Yes, skeptical, yeah. yes. Roswell, a town of close to 50,000 people, will double in size during the four days of the 60th anniversary UFO festival. Guy Malone is organizing the festival and a concurrent conference of UFO investigators. He says the city government realizes the importance of the whole UFO story to the local economy. It seems like 11 or 12 percent of the employment base in Roswell is now tourism and hospitality oriented, such as hotels, restaurants, uh, museums and things like that. A decade ago that number was a zero point something percent. Malone says Roswell's populace is divided between those who think the famous alien incident is a bunch of nonsense that can be exploited for tourist dollars and those who really do think something happened and that the government covered it up. You've got a whole community involved here. You do have the serious side of researchers, witnesses that can actually give you the serious side if that's what you're looking for. And then there's also the campy or the shtick side of it too. One of the serious Roswell residents is former Texas civil engineer Dennis Balthaser, who says his investigations have convinced him that the U.S. military did recover a crashed alien craft 60 years ago and hid it from the public. The United States government has had a lot of practice in keeping secrets. Good examples are the atomic bomb, which was developed up here in Los Alamos, just north of uh, Roswell. Uh, 50,000 people were involved with that project for about 10 years, and it was kept secret. Balthaser thinks it may have been the first test of an atomic bomb here in New Mexico in 1945, and the atomic bombs kept at the Roswell Army Base that drew the attention of visitors from another world. Balthaser is aware that many people here and elsewhere view belief in UFOs as irrational, but he thinks this would change if the U.S. government followed other governments in revealing what it knows. Within the last six months, the government of France and the government of England have both announced that they are going to open up their UFO files. The United States is making no attempt to do that. It's not likely that any dramatic new evidence will emerge at the UFO conference here to change anyone's mind one way or the other on the Roswell incident, but Guy Malone believes the town will be able to capitalize on it for a long time to come. I think the mystery will always endure. The mystery will always be there. Nobody is going to ever have conclusive proof of what it was or wasn't. Local business owners agree, and there are now plans for a new, much larger UFO museum in town. But the questions about what happened here 60 years ago will never be resolved, unless, of course, the aliens themselves were to pay a return visit just to clear things up. Greg Flakus, VOA News, Roswell, New Mexico.